Hi, and welcome to the channel, which covers mainly physiology, pharmacology, and image processing. I thought I wanted, what I wanted to do uh, today was just a quick video on background subtraction and three ways in which you could subtract the background from an image. This is related to the previous video that I did in which we used binary masks in order to extract information from fairly noisy images. But let's say you just had a, a kind of a noisy background and you wanted to subtract uh, that background noise. I'm using image J and the image I'm using here is a few cells. These are, uh, I think these were LN cap cells. They have a fluorescent drug on them. Quite a low concentration of the drug, so there's not a great deal of fluorescence. Let me just make this a grayscale lookup table so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, not too bad, but let's use the 323 RGB lookup table. If I zoom in in the background here, uh, you can see it's, it's a fairly noisy background. And if you look at the values up here, you get a feel for roughly what the value of the background fluorescence is. Looks like it's going between 12, 10, 8, thereabouts. Let me just take the image back. Okay, so how can we subtract this image, the background? Simplest way, or one way, would be to determine what the mean fluorescence is on the background. So I'll draw a little square and quite simply just measure that. Find out what is the average fluorescence. Looks as if it's about 8.2. So really what I would be wanting to do would be to, to subtract a value of 8.2 from the fluorescence on my cells because whatever fluorescence I measure on these cells is 8.2 units higher because it includes the background. So I want to subtract 8.2 from my entire image here. I will just go to process and for this I want to subtract a value of, what do we say, 8.2. Two. I won't actually do it, I'll just preview it. I think it's quite a nice, quite a nice result. Before background subtraction, after background subtraction. And you would just click OK and you would have your, your subtracted image. How else might we do it? Well, we could just use the subtract background option. And what it does is it defaults to the rolling ball uh, radius. You could look up, you could look this up on the the um, on, in the manual for image J. Um, if we preview it, you'll see that. Oh, we've got that in the background. If we preview, you'll see it makes a an estimate of what the background fluorescence is. Well, that's not too bad. The sliding uh, paraboloid is the more modern version and that might work quite well too. This of course will be dependent on, on your individual images, what, what will work best for you. So that's one option. What about actually using the background? So here if we create the background, that's what the background actually looks like. We could do a little bit of smoothing on the background, but let's uh, let's just go with that. I'm going to I'm going to um, I'll just take that. Okay. So this is the background. Now it looks a bit odd because of the lookup table. But if I go back to the grayscale lookup table, you'll see you can only just get a shadow, a hint of the the cells there. But um, Let's stick with this. Why would you want to use the background? Well, you see these holes here. What we might want to do is perhaps smooth that out a bit. Here's another copy of my original image. And let me change the lookup table. Okay, so I've got my original image on the left. I've got the background image on the right. And I could just subtract these two images. So 
Let me just do that. I do my image calculator. Oh no, first of all, let me just rename this uh, just for simplicity. I'll call it, this is the original, and this we're going to rename this as the background image. And what we can do is an image subtraction, an image calculator. So my main image is my original, and I want to subtract from that the background image and create a new image. Boom, there we go. Okay, not too bad. If we to, to compare that with the standard background subtraction, how does that look? Pretty similar, as we'd expect. Now, one of the advantages we have of having the background is, well, we could adjust this. Now, I would only ever do this if you wanted to make a pretty image. You would have to be very careful of adjusting the background and then subtracting if you were then going to measure the brightness from an image because you have, in effect, in effect adjusted the numbers and you need to be careful with that. But let's go through with the process anyway and you can see what happens. I'm going to adjust the brightness and contrast in the background image. Take it up a little bit. Maybe something like that. Kind of smooths out the, the holes that you see there. I'll apply that. Now let's do that image subtraction again. So we're going to image calculator. I've got my original image. I'm going to subtract from that the background, create a new image. There you go. Now that's quite nice, isn't it? Here was the subtracted, this is the image with the subtraction, the background. Here we have the original image on the left hand side. And on the right, I think you would agree, hopefully, quite a clean image. Offer to do a little low pass on that. Let's just do a little Gaussian blur. Preview that. That yeah, looks not too bad. We'll stick with one. Let's do a Gaussian blur of the original image. Very nice. What if we then did let's, let's make, make them back to grayscale? And make this one a grayscale. Can barely see them. Well, let's enhance the contrast. And because of all these manipulations, that's why I'm saying it's really important that you don't, oops, lost the image over on that other window there. It's really important that you don't then use these images for anything other than illustrative purposes. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to enhance the contrast on this one. Uh, I'll allow 0.3% of the pixels to reach saturation, that is uh, 255 value. Not too bad. Let's look at this one. Enhance the contrast. Quite a nice result, I would say. So here's my original image. We'll put it back into a grayscale. And... I think you might agree, hopefully you might agree. That's really quite a nice clean up of the image. Remove the background here. I then done some low pass, but here is a, a more severe background reduction because we adjusted the background image before making the image subtraction. Okay, that may be of use in some cases, maybe not. Hope you like that one though.